everyone and welcome back to Natural Beauty by Anna. I'm Anna and today I'm gonna talk some more about tamanu oil because one video about tamanu oil just isn't enough. I have to ask you to forgive me for my strange voice right now. I am recovering from a cold. Which is why there was no video on my channel last week. I apologize for that. But I'm back here and ready to talk some more about tamanu oil. Today's video will be a little bit of a continuation of the last video on this channel in which I talked a little bit more in depth about tamanu oil, its properties, what kind of research there is about the tamanu oil and why do I use it religiously on a daily basis in my skincare routine. And if you're curious to hear more about that, I invite you to go watch that video. The link will be in the description box below. But today I thought I would get more into the practical side of it and show you 5 skincare product recipes that I am making using tamanu oil. Also, if you remember from a few weeks back when I did an unboxing right here on this channel, that video will also be linked in the description box below, so I invite you to go check it out. I got myself a new brand of tamanu oil from Botanic Universe and that will be featured in most of my recipes today. So yeah, let's not drag this too long, let's get right into the recipes. But before we jump into the first recipe, I have to tell you, do not use tamanu oil if you're allergic to it. If you have never used tamanu oil in your skincare before, make sure that you do an allergy and a sensitivity test by applying a small amount of tamanu oil on a small surface of your skin. And actually you should do that with pretty much any skincare product that you will ever use in your life, ever, always. Don't forget. Anyway, let's get back to it with the first recipe. Tamanu oil and clay face cleanser. And the ingredients that I have used for this one are half a teaspoon of grapeseed butter, two teaspoons of aloe vera juice, 10 drops of tamanu oil, which would be about the equivalent of a quarter of a teaspoon of tamanu oil, and one teaspoon of clay. And in this case, I used Australian olive green clay, but you can use any type of clay that you want. And yes, recently I have been exploring the option of using clays in your face cleansers because I have recently read that clays or at least certain types of clays have the potential of attracting dirt particles and dead skin cells that get trapped in the pores of your skin to themselves. So when you wash off the cleanser mixed with the clay, it removes all of those unwanted dead skin cells and dirt from your skin. So far it's been working really nicely. I am really happy with the results. I can't tell for sure that my skin is any cleaner than it used to be before when I was using a similar facial uh, cleanser but without adding clay to it. But it does feel much softer and smoother after just using the cleanser, which is definitely a plus for me. The grapeseed butter gives it a more, well, buttery texture, making it easier to apply and rub on the face. And the aloe vera gel juice gives it a more watery consistency so that it applies more like a cleanser rather than just a face mask. As for the tamanu oil, I'm adding it to this recipe because of its antimicrobial and antibacterial properties. It just kind of makes sense for me to use an oil that has these properties in a face cleanser. As for the application, first off, I am tying up my hair because you don't want that hair in your face when you're doing your skincare routine and of course removing my glasses and I'm simply applying it with my fingers. Because of its thicker consistency, given the use of the clay and the grapeseed butter, it does apply on the skin and kind of stays there, but you can move it around very easily, unlike a mask that is much denser, and once you apply it, if you touch it with your fingers, you are more likely to lift it off the skin. This cleanser, you can rub it on your skin with your fingers. As a side note, I would probably try to make it a little bit more diluted next time by either adding a little bit less clay or a little bit more aloe vera gel juice. But overall, I was pretty happy with how it came out and it performed really well. After I was done massaging the cleanser on my skin for a couple of minutes, I just rinsed it off with lukewarm water. And as I have mentioned, it left my skin feeling really soft, which I really, really enjoyed. 
It does, however, dry the skin quite a bit, so you want to move on to the next step rather quickly. The second recipe that we're gonna be talking about today, Tamanu Oil and Ground Coffee Face Scrub. Now, this is not the first coffee-based face scrub that I have made on this channel, and if you've seen my previous videos, then you know how much I enjoy a good coffee scrub. The smell, the texture, the feeling that it leaves to my skin is just so good, so I'm so happy to introduce this recipe in this video also and the ingredients that i have used for it are one teaspoon of ground coffee half a teaspoon of jojoba oil and half a teaspoon of tamano oil now for the ground coffee there really isn't much to say i have mentioned it before i'm using it mostly because i really really like the texture of the ground coffee in a scrub i feel like it cleans my skin really well without it feeling too harsh without irritating my skin and the really really nice smell of coffee on my face is definitely a plus Jojoba oil is a great oil to use in skincare for people who have acne prone skin because it is so similar to the sebum that the skin naturally produces. Now that sebum when produced in excess blocks the hair follicles which cause acne breakouts. So by applying jojoba oil to the skin it basically tricks your skin into thinking it already has enough oil and so it doesn't need to produce anymore. This is an oversimplification. There is a very complex process that happens in your skin, but it does help in that sense. However, I have never been able to use jojoba oil on my skin and leave it on the skin. I do enjoy using it in products that I would remove right away, like cleansers, makeup removers, or like in this case, in a scrub. Now for the tamanu oil, similarly to the face cleanser, I'm adding tamanu oil to this face scrub because of its antimicrobial and antibacterial properties, but also because of its texture. The tamanu oil is very slick. I'm not really sure how else to describe it, but basically the combination between tamanu oil and jojoba oil allow the coffee ground to slide on my skin much easier as I'm, as I'm rubbing the, the scrub on my face and not feel like I'm just applying a dry scrub that would scratch and irritate my skin. That would be horrible, right? As for the application, again, I'm just applying it with my fingers. I'm rubbing it on for as long as I feel like it is necessary. It is good with face scrubs, especially if you're not used to using face scrubs in general, to start with a shorter application period, so by rubbing it on your face for maybe 20 seconds at most, and increase as you feel necessary and as you feel comfortable over time. Currently, I am rubbing a face scrub, a coffee-based face scrub on my skin, for around two to three minutes, no more than that. I feel like after this time period, my skin starts getting red. It starts getting a little bit sensitive. So that for me is the signal that I have to stop and go and wash it off. And just like with the face cleanser, I'm just removing it with lukewarm water. Now for the third recipe that we're gonna be talking about today, tamanu oil and shea butter face mask. And the ingredients that I have used for this recipe are half a teaspoon of shea butter, 10 drops of tamanu oil, which is approximately a quarter of a teaspoon, and one teaspoon of clay. And for the sake of continuity, I also used Australian olive green clay for this recipe, but you can use any clay that you like. The more I'm using this unrefined shea butter on my skin, the more I enjoy it. It is much thicker, much denser than any other butter I've ever used, so it makes mixing it with pretty much any other ingredient a little bit difficult, but it's worth the effort for the effects that it has on my skin. Shea butter is packed with vitamins and fatty acids, which are great for the skin. It also helps soften the skin, which makes it a great base ingredient for a face mask and definitely one of my favorite face ingredients for a face mask. For the tamanu oil, I am more looking for its wound healing properties here. Since I'm applying it in a mask here, I'm giving it the time to sit on my skin and slowly heal the after acne marks that I have all over my skin after a breakout, as it usually happens. The type of clay that I use depends a lot on what time of the month I am in. At the time when I filmed this, I was expecting a breakout to happen. I knew it was gonna happen. And so I chose to go with Australian olive green clay in both the recipes because of its cleansing and purifying properties, because it does help remove dirt from the skin and it also helps balance oiliness, which I knew would eventually help 
contain my breakout make it behave so to say but if i were for example in a period after the breakout had passed i would go with the french pink clay which helps remove dead skin cells and refresh the skin in general and that helps a lot with the appearance of my skin after a breakout and of course there are other clays that i use in other circumstances and if you're curious to hear more about the types of clays that i'm using and when i'm using them let me know in the comment section below and i will make a video about it as for the application, I apply it with a face brush and let it sit on my face for anywhere between 10 minutes and half an hour. And I'm simply removing it with lukewarm water. And since I'm using shea butter into this face mask, it does not dry on my skin the way regular clay masks do. And it also doesn't leave my skin dry after removing it, but instead leaves it feeling moisturized and soft. The fourth recipe on this list, Tamanu Oil and Rosehip Oil Mix. Now this is the first recipe, the first video actually that I ever put on this channel. So if you want to hear more about this recipe and these two oils combined in particular, I invite you to go check out that video. The link will be, guess where, in the description box below. Now, since this mix is part of my daily skincare routine and I always have it on hand, I mean literally always, I always make sure to mix it a couple of days in advance when I see that I'm running low. But because I still had quite a lot left at the time when I filmed this video, there was no need for me to mix it again. However, we can quickly go over the recipe. The ingredients that I have used, as the title suggests, are rosehip oil and tamanu oil and the ratio is 4 to 1. So for every Every four teaspoons of rosehip oil I use one teaspoon of tamanu oil and the reason for using this ratio is because rosehip oil is a much thinner easier to absorb oil while tamanu oil is much thicker and it doesn't absorb as easily into the skin so I feel that by reducing the quantity of tamanu oil it makes the mixture as a whole much easier to apply and absorb into the skin considering that this is a product that I am applying and leaving on the skin at the end of my skincare routine, I do want a product that would absorb into the skin quickly and that would not leave an oily, greasy feeling to my skin after applying it. Application is very easy. I apply it with the tips of my fingers and I make sure to cover all of my face, neck and chest area. And that is it, no removing, no nothing, it just stays there. And now we are moving on to the last recipe on this list, Tamanu Oil and Tea Tree Oil Acne Spot Treatment. And the ingredients that I have used are 20 drops of tamanu oil, which is about the equivalent of half a teaspoon of tamanu oil, 2 drops of tea tree oil, I'm serious, 2 drops, no more, you don't need more than that. Tea tree oil is very strong, very concentrated and you need to dilute it very well into a carrier oil, in this case into the tamanu oil, and 1 teaspoon of tea powder. Although recently I have experimented with using a clay instead of a tea powder, I do feel like the tea powder is way more efficient. And the reason why I am using tamanu oil in this mix is because the tea tree oil and the tea powder together are acting to slowly dry the pimple. And the tamanu oil helps protect the skin around so that it doesn't get too dry, so that it doesn't get inflammated. It helps reduce the appearance of the small scar or wound that is left after the pimple has dried. I'm applying it with a q-tip directly on each pimple head um, and I'm letting it sit there for as long as possible, honestly. If I'm going to stay at home, work on my computer or do house chores, I will leave it there uh, for a few hours before removing it. And when I'm done with it, I simply remove it with a little bit of lukewarm water, making sure to follow with my moisturizing and hydrating products. And that is it! Five skincare products that you can make yourself using tamanu oil. Now I have mentioned this before, but tamanu oil is definitely one of my favorite ingredients to use in my skincare, which is why I love adding it to different products like cleansers and scrubs and masks. It has helped me a lot over time, it has helped improve my acne situation and so I strongly recommend it. As I said in the beginning of this video, however, make sure you're not allergic before using it. 
So yeah, what do you think of my recipes? Let me know in the comment section below if you're using any of these recipes or any variations of these recipes. And if not, then tell me how are you using tamano oil in your skincare routine. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Also, don't forget to stay hydrated and I'll see you all next time. Bye!